Hello my peeps, welcome back to the channel and happy Halloween. First of all, I hope you've all enjoyed all the videos that I've posted this month as much as I've enjoyed making them. I've said this many times in the past, but it still reigns true. These are some of my favorite videos to make. And for this year's conclusion, I thought it'd be fun to do a little pumpkin spice trot and try out some of these seasonal items that a lot of restaurants have released. Rate them all and then try to remake them at home and see if we can do any better. And I do have some surprises along the way to try to go out with a bang this year. But let's get right into this one. First up in today's pumpkin spice mania is something I've been dying to try since the day they released it. But I've waited until now for this video and they are the pumpkin spice buttermilk pancakes from IHOP. Made with real pumpkin and seasonal spices, these pumpkin spice pancakes are crowned with a creamy whipped topping. It's where? These are shockingly great. I expected them to be good, but they're way better than I expected. The amount of real pumpkin flavor that's in there is great. I was thinking it would be a little artificial tasting. <sighs> they smell incredible too. They smell like a maple pumpkin spicy graham cracker. Maybe I could improve a little bit on the buttermilk flavor. It kind of gets lost in the midst of everything else. But these are really, really good overall. A good challenge to start off this one. If any of you guys are gonna wanna make these along with me, grab yourselves some flour and salt, baking powder and pumpkin pie spice, buttermilk, vanilla, pumpkin puree and brown sugar, some butter and an egg. And obviously, since these are a few bumps above the average pancake in the flavor and seasonality aspects, it makes sense that they are gonna require one or two additional steps, that just being mixing your dry ingredients and your wet stuff separate before gently folding all that together and then cooking them off. And like I said, these ones are hopefully gonna have a bit more of the tangy, buttermilky taste. I'm not sure how much we can improve on the pumpkin and the spice flavor. That stuff was really strong and good. This iteration will in fact have um, some whipped topping. I know I didn't include that in the ingredients. But feel free to throw it on if you got it, in addition to that same old syrup. And let's see if we were able to elevate these, if at all. I think these look quite a bit better. At least to me anyways. At the very least, they look way more rustic. Mm. These are fantastic. There's really not much to not like. If you like pumpkin and pancakes, these are for you. The extra pumpkin in there makes the insides a little bit more custard-like as opposed to bread-like. And my favorite thing about homemade pancakes is that crispy edge. I find that you would struggle to find that even at like a diner or something that does pancakes really well. And that just comes from a little higher heat, a lot of fat in the pan. Mm. I give it to the Wendy's. I got me. Hey, how you doing? Do you guys have the pumpkin spice frosties? I do. Next up today is another one that has been killing me to try it. It kind of went viral in its own right. It's your favorite dessert mixed with your favorite fall flavor. It's pumpkin spice. It's a Wendy's frosty. It's basically delicious. That was a wild first hit because I was prepared to say that I didn't love this. It's a really strong flavor. I mean, usually that's not a bad thing. It kind of takes you off guard a little bit. It's so strong. It's also teetering on Yankee Candle, but the texture is undoubtedly the winner here. If you've never had a Frosty, it's basically like a softer, lighter soft serve. It seems like there's so much air whipped into this in addition to probably a whole lot of preservatives and different kinds of gums that we won't have access to today, but I'm still gonna try my best. For our homemade Wendy's Frosty attempt, I grabbed some whole milk, Cool Whip, and sweetened condensed milk, our pumpkin pie spice, the pumpkin puree, and some vanilla extract. I know the Cool Whip may feel a little cheap and lazy to some of you, but based on everything I read, it's one of the best ways to achieve that real airy, frosty texture. First order of business with this is to whip up your ice cream base, that being everything I just showed you down into a blender. Whipped up until homogenous and hopefully not overflowing on your counter. And then that mix goes down into whatever kind of ice cream making vessel you may have on hand. In my case, it's a bowl with salted ice and the top half of a very old ice cream mixer. Um, Steven found this somewhere buried in this house. I would like to mention that I did in fact finally break down and order an ice cream machine and Amazon failed to deliver it on time for this video. So where's my refund, Jeffrey? About an hour later, we achieved this, which didn't look the best. It was quite a bit icy. It should not have taken that long to firm up. So something's probably wrong, but this might be the best we're gonna get. So let's just taste it. Well, that scared me for a bit. Um, for a while there, I thought we might not have anything to taste, but we just barely got there in the end. It is very close um, to being ice cream soup, but still counts in my book. 
Yeah, this might just be one that you should be buying. Between the setup, the amount of time and ingredients it could take, and really, this is not a product that's better than what you're gonna get in those stores made by those industrial machines. With all the preservatives and the gums, yes, but for stuff like this, it's all about the texture and the finer details. This is very icy compared to the Frosty. It is melting very fast. It's still good, and I'm happy I tried it once. There's a lot of good pumpkin flavor, but like I said, skip it. Wendy's, you win this round. And finally, the last recipe of the month is the OG, the reason that any of these pumpkin spice videos ever existed. It's the classic, legendary pumpkin spice latte. But I'm not just gonna roll down the street and grab one through the drive-thru. This video is about the best of the best, so I think it's time that we finally visit the birthplace. <laughs> It does taste the same. <laughs> There's nothing different, but it's still damn good. For our gourmet elevated pumpkin spice latte at home, I grabbed vanilla soy milk and pumpkin spice coffee, cinnamon sticks, heavy cream, allspice berries and vanilla, some whole nutmeg, ginger, whole cloves, the rest of the pumpkin, and some brown sugar. So this is it, my peeps. I'm combining all my years of experience and knowledge I'm gonna try to make the best pumpkin spice latte I have ever had. I brewed some really strong pumpkin spice coffee. That's gonna be our coffee slash espresso base. I made the milk base with the soy milk, pumpkin, and spices. If you didn't know, this is the majority of what makes up the lattes. And as we do not have a thousand dollar espresso machine on hand to steam this and make that milk foam, I just whipped up a little bit of some heavy cream to make some mock milk foam to ladle on the top of this at the end. And as we mix all this beautiful stuff together and wind down on this hectic month, I'd like to leave you all with one last moment of pure bliss. What a month. What a life. As always, I wanna thank every single person that has helped me make this month possible. Without all you guys, I would never be able to do half of this stuff. Thank you so much to all of you for coming back year after year. You are the main motivation for these videos. As always, let me know what you'd like to see me test next down in the comments, over on Instagram. My links are all down in the description. Other than that, have a fantastic rest of your week. I will see you right back here next time. Peace.